Hey guys, Clue here with a little bit different video today. Today we are going to be jumping into looking at Hogwarts Legacy, which is a game I am very excited about coming out um, here in a couple weeks. And it is one that is going to get played on the channel, and I'm just really excited about it. And I think I know a lot of other people are. It has been the top selling game on Steam uh, the last couple weeks, and you know people are just really excited about it. Um, Harry Potter has been a staple um, bestseller in all genres of media for 20 years. I guess it's uh, over 20 years now. So, um, yeah, so we're going to jump right in here. I uh, got the main website pulled up. Um, I've been a Harry Potter uh, fan for a long time. My daughter grew up on it. Uh, read the books with her, watched the movies with her, uh, went to Universal Studios and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter with her. Um, yeah, so very excited to get this game. Um, I know, you know, there were some games that came out during the movies and some of them weren't that bad, but this is our first chance at like a truly um, AAA Harry Potter title that, um, yeah. So... We're going to look at this. Let's go ahead and I guess we'll look, go to the Hogwarts Le Legacy uh, you, official YouTube page. And we'll go ahead, since I haven't really talked about, we'll look at the official reveal trailer. Now this is two years old, um, kind of a hype trailer from a long time ago. The game's been pushed back many times. In fact, um, for some consoles, it has been pushed back again, um, but we'll look at that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and jump into this video. Magic, both beautiful and powerful. So a very, very cool concept to have Harry Potter um, is the legacy of Hogwarts story in a huge open world RPG game. Now it is time to add your Just if they these are able to do it correctly. And quite possibly but definitely a, definitely exciting to see a game set on Hogwarts if they do this right. It is going to be amazing. Every Looks amazing. Every you know, there are millions of Harry Potter fans out there that want to be able to live an experience in Hogwarts. Here you will meet lifelong friends and grow into your own magical abilities in the classrooms of the world's most talented professors. And while your journey begins at Hogwarts, brewing potions, taming fantastic beasts, very cool. Mastery spells. There is a larger world beyond these walls. A world filled with dangers you can't yet imagine. An ancient knowledge. No matter what, it's going to sell because it's Harry Potter. Uh, we can see that from it being number one on the charts before it even comes out. But if they do this right, they're, they're going to have a mega hit on their hands. The beasts in this are really cool. Is limitless. But what form will it take? Guess that might be one of the main enemies with the skull mask on. Looks like it. What you stand for. The choices you make now. That music almost sounds like the Avengers uh, song whenever it builds up and Christian does like that. So that's very cool, but that is very... Oh, 2021. <laughs> they did not. They definitely did not hit the 2021 date. Uh, then hit the 2022 uh, year. We are back to 2023. All right, so... Definitely good music, good setting. If if they do Hogwarts right, ooh, it's gonna be awesome. 
Um, so just a day ago, they released a new official cinematic trailer. So let's look at that. Take this. Find them. Well, headless, nearly headless Nick action. Awesome. I'm sure they'll have the, uh, it's kind of showing in the game some of the enemies you'll fight. Sure. Be against spiders in the forest. It looks like, you know, this is before Voldemort's time, so. It says they're just some evil, evil wizards of some sort. Some general thugs or something. Awesome. Invited to Hogwarts. Begins now. Hogwarts legacy. Live the unwritten. Awesome. So... Oh, kind of getting an idea of uh, some of the videos I might watch. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so it is releasing on the 10th of February for most consoles. Um, I forget exactly, but I think like the old consoles, like the PS4 and the older Xbox, they're getting delayed um, until like April or so. Um, we'll probably see that somewhere. But yep, pre-order available. February 10th, and if you do have a PlayStation 5, there is a special mission, I guess, that is locked to PlayStation 5 exclusive for a year, and they say it's a pretty good mission, so if it's not a, if you're wondering which one to buy it on, PS5 kind of is the way to go. I bought it on Steam on PC, because that's kind of what I do, but um, yeah. But if you have a, if you're a choice for you, definitely sounds like PS5 is the way to go. Hopefully after a year we'll get that quest, but by then, who knows? Hopefully there are a lot of uh, new gameplay patches and stuff in the future. As you can see, it releases in a couple weeks on February 10th. Um, I do have the, I have pre-purchased the, the uh, deluxe edition. So I think I get three days, yeah, three days early access to that. So I'll be playing it, what, on the 7th, I guess. Um, also got a Thestral Mount and some Dark Arts uh, um, cosmetic stuff, a, a Battle Arena, a cosmetic set, and a Garrison Hat Dark Arts. Uh, also for pre-ordering it, got the Onyx Hippogriff mount, so that hopefully will be a cool thing. Um, so yeah, they've been touting about the new newest PC specs. I don't know if, I assume Steam has the updated ones. Let's go ahead and look on the official website. Uh, so minimum specs, the Windows 10 will look Kind of look, maybe look across both of them here. Minimum and recommended both Windows 10. Oh, Ultra. Oh, and they got Ultra and Ultra Fork. Oh, gosh. They got all sorts of different levels here. I guess this might uh, go with what uh, settings, graphic settings you go with. But anyway, CPU, we got a uh, 6th Gen i5 or 1st um, Gen Ryzen. Uh, then we move up on the high specs to an i7 8th gen and the next generation of Ryzen. Uh, we're just kind of going up here. The ultra specs then, another two generations on Intel, and then the next generation of Ryzen, the last generation of Ryzen. These are both the Ryzen 7s. And then it's the same for the 4K, so no... So, so far, the Ultra and the Ultra 4K are the same with CPU. Um, 
RAM, so low, you want at least 16 gigs, 16 gigs. And for those really high, 32. GPU, you can start out with a GTX 960 or RX 470. So those both have four gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, for the high specs, a 1080 Ti or RX 5700 XT or an Intel Arc A770. So that's nice to see Intel getting in that game. Hopefully they uh, increase their drivers so we get, we get three GPU choices. Maybe that'll... Um, make some competition and the pricing on GPUs can go down some for everybody. All right, for ultra specs, an RTX 2080 Ti and a Radeon RX 6800 XT. So we're looking at two generations back for uh, the Nvidia card and last generation for Radeon. And I both of these are you can get for a relatively good price right now. Let's see the 4K specs. Dang, a 3090 Ti and a 7900 XT. So that's cards that were just released last year. Uh, that's, you know, AMD's newest card. Not the highest one. That's not the XTX. That's a step down, but that's still a $900 card. And then the 3090s are crazy expensive still. The 3090 Ti's, I think they're, funny enough, more... Uh, more expensive than the 4090s right now. But, so you need a crazy graphics card to be able to pull off 4K Ultra. If you're worried about it for uh, watching on this channel, I will we'll go over that in a little bit, but I do have the specs to run it in the highest, highest specs possible. Um, so these are all DX12. Need 85 gigabytes of storage. Um, I don't know that the notes are really, I guess it figures that you're doing 720p 30 FPS with this, this, these low specs, and then up here you're doing 1080p at 60, so that's actually pretty good, like, this is a pretty good thing to shoot for, maybe we can look at a video on how, um, how cheaply you can build a computer for this which is pretty pretty cheap, I would say. Just kind of looking, I would bet under $500 you could build one that does 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, Ultra is like for your 1440p, and then 4K at 60 frames per second. So uh, my machine I just actually upgraded. I was lucky enough to be in a position to do that. Um, I currently have a 7700X uh, Ryzen, car, Ryzen chip, but I am going to be getting an X3D, probably the 7950X3D, unless it's terrible when it comes out. And if that, if so, if it's not so good, I'll just buy the regular 7950X. Um, and I do have a RTX 4090, and I will have, uh, right now I have 32 gigs of RAM, but I will be upgrading to 64 gigs of DDR5-6000 when I get my X3D chip. So, yeah, I'll be ready to go for you guys. Um, my main monitor is, though, it's not a 4K monitor. It is a Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. It's a 49-inch Super Ultra Wide. Um, so I guess I'll see. Hopefully the game supports that super ultra wide resolution. But anyway, so, um, so with Hogwarts Legacy, if you guys are planning on playing, uh, you can link it to your higher Harry Potter fan club account. Um, and then you'll be able to go ahead and get sorted into your house and you'll be able to um, load that into the game. And also it'll pick out what kind of wand you're going to use and you'll be able to take that into the game. And I have already done that, and I'll show you guys that. Uh, and then also you get some award the rewards for um, connecting the accounts. Uh, fanatic school robe and a beak skull mask. So I have done that, so we will get that for when we're playing. Um, if we just, let's see, yeah. Here is... 
the wizarding war this is like the the site for uh, the fan club and stuff all sorts of other stuff you can do here but oh sign me out uh oh luckily my password was hidden <laughs> All right, so as you can see, I am a Ravenclaw. Um, on here, it selects a Patronus for you, too. That says nothing about taking that into the game, so um, possibly the Patronus. I would guess it will have a Patronus in the game, but maybe it's the same store for store reasons. It's the same for all characters. I don't know, but we will get to take our Ravenclaw house into the game, and also our wand is a Redwood wand. I think it's a unicorn core. Uh, we can look at that in a second. So for anybody not as familiar with the uh, Harry Potter universe, um, Ravenclaw is kind of like the analytical, um, intellectual house. Um, I look at the wiki, the wiki here. Uh, members of this house are characterized by their wit, learning, and wisdom. Um, so that is what we're going to do. And then our wand here, a redwood wand with a unicorn core. So all this stuff has like a meaning behind it. So let's see here. So like our wand, redwood, wood, redwood, wood for a lot wand. Oh, that's a tongue twister. Uh, redwood is in short supply at constant demand to its reputation for bringing good fortune to its owner. As is usually the case with wand lore, the general populace have the truth back to front. Redwood wands are not themselves lucky, but are strongly attached to witches and wizards who already possess the admiral ability to fall on their feet, to make the right choice, to snap, snatch advantage from catastrophe. The combination of such a witch or wizard with a redwood wand is always intriguing, and I generally expect to hear of exciting exploits when I send this special pairing out for my workshop. So... The game is telling us we are lucky, so hopefully we can see that uh, when we're playing in the game. We've got a unicorn core here. Unicorn hair generally produces the most consistent magic and is least subject to fluctuations and blockages. Wands with unicorn cores are generally the most difficult to turn to the dark art, so that's all good stuff. They're the most faithful of all wands and usually remain strongly attached to their owner first owner, irrespective of whether he or she was an accomplished witch or wizard. So all this is good. It's consistent. Um, it'll stay good and loyal to us. However, um, a minor disadvantages of unicorn hair that they do not make the most powerful wands, although the wand would may compensate. So, um, so let's hope that we can still I'm guessing maybe they'll take all this into account in the game, so hopefully we're still uh, still able to to uh, adequately make it through with our wand that may be less than the most powerful. Um, so it's a pretty long wand. It says most long wands will be in the range of between 9 and 14 inches. Um, yeah. So pretty much and it says also that short wands uh select those whose characters character is lacking rather than because they're short so i just like to say uh maybe that means that excessive the excessive wand links means it's selecting those with uh uh has a lot of character and uh so i don't know anyway hard flexibility so um, so it's rigid wand. The degree of adaptability and willingness to change possessed by the wand and owner pack pair. This factor ought not to be considered separately from the wand, wood, core, and length, nor the owner's life experience and style of magic, all of which will combine to make the wand in question unique. All right, so there we are. If I uh, so Ravenclaw, those are some. Famous Ravenclaws that you recognize from the movie. Luna Lovegood, Gilderoy Lockhart. Don't really want to be um, in his, but, you know, Luna's cool. And Phileas Fit Flitwick, he was the uh, head of Ravenclaw during the movies, so it's cool. If we do get to select our pet, 
I will want a snow owl most likely. So that is that. Let's see what else we got here. So just recently they um just go through the Twitter here of Hogwarts Legacy. Stuff that so they just released a bunch of the characters and who is voicing them. That was just uh, last week. Um, so the biggest one here is Phil uh, Phineas Nigellus Black, who is the headmaster. Um, apparently he is a not very liked headmaster, but he is being voiced um, by Simon Pegg, who is a pretty famous actor. Most of you probably know him. Um, movies like, it's in the Mission Impossible movies, uh, Star Trek. He's kind of a nerd, you could say. So that is cool. And Phineas Nigellus Black is a... Uh, a relative of Sirius Black. Of course, this game takes place possibly like 150 years before um, the events in the movies and books, so you're not really going to know anybody um, except the ghosts at Hogwarts. Uh, these two act actors are actually voices that you can pick for your playable character, Sebastian Croft and Amelia Gething. That's pretty cool. Um, there's some other videos if you go to the Twitter and just kind of see some of the different spells and, and stuff, but we won't really take time for that. Um, I don't know that there's anything more that's super, super exciting that we need to look at. There are some other videos, but we could save that for another time. So yeah, I am super excited to play. Um, you know, it's really, really just going to be how good I think they do as far as um, bringing Hogwarts to life and not messing up Hogwarts. Um, hopefully it's full and rich and you're able to explore a lot of it. I know they cut out Quidditch, which they originally were going to have in the game, and they cut out some of the surrounding areas from Hogwarts, so just hopefully they didn't cut out too much, and it's still a, a big RPG, and you can explore that universe. And Either way, we are going to check it out on the 10th, and I am sure it's going to be amazing. So I'll probably do a couple more videos before it comes out. Um, you can look forward to those, and if you're excited about the game too, so I got a bumping computer, and if you want to see Ravenclaw's uh, side of it, at least to start out with, um, you can like and subscribe to the channel and know that I will be here and I will be putting a lot of time and effort into the game. Um, yeah, and they say it's going to take, I think the, I read somewhere it was like 30 hours to complete the main story, but then like, 100 hours or maybe it was 70 hours to get 100% completion definitely be going for 100% completion unless there's something absolutely crazy on there but we'll be playing a lot of it so um if you're looking forward to that and maybe more news about hogwarts legacy please uh, like and subscribe and i will catch you in the next one